What's up guys, welcome to a new video. So in this one, we're gonna be looking at three different Shopify stores. We're gonna be looking at a cat store, a general store, and a gadget store. If you're part of my free Facebook group, then you'll know a few weeks ago, I posted this post here that you see on the screen asking people to send me their store links so I can review them for my YouTube channel. If you wanna get your store reviewed, then all you have to do is join the group. There is a link in the description below. It's 100% free um, and simply post your store then on this post, as you can see people have done. Currently, I'm working my way top to bottom. I'm gonna try and fit in about three stores per video. So bear with me and at some point I will get round to yours. Before we jump into store number one though, I just wanna very quickly mention, as always in every single video, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one consultation with me. So chance for me and you then to have a Skype call um, and you can ask me whatever you want. So I could review your store, we could go through for your Facebook ads, we could look at certain products, whatever it is, for your chance to win that then it's dead easy to do. All you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the like button on this video and leave a comment down below and I will announce the winner in the next video. If you come to my previous video then, so yesterday's, make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. And with that being said then guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy it. And let's get into store number one. So store number one then comes from Stephen Drake. Stephen was the very first person to post his link. So thank you very much. And his store then is called Bargain Buys Are Us. So let's open it up. And the way I'm gonna structure this video then is I'm gonna work through the site top to bottom, um, through the homepage and through the product page. Maybe have a look at the cart page too, purely because when it comes to any e-commerce site, in my opinion, they're the three most important pages. So starting from the very beginning then, I can see he's uploaded his own Favicon, which matches the name of the store, which is good. In my opinion, it just adds that touch of professionalism. He's got a .com domain as well, which is great. If you're gonna be selling throughout the world, worldwide, then I always recommend a .com domain. It's the most universal domain. Whereas if you're sticking to the UK, then I recommend just a .co.uk. He's got his top banner up here then, um, which is good, looks nice. Um, incentive for people to enter their email, gathering emails, which is great. He's also got a mention of free shipping on all orders, which is, again is great because it's gonna entice people um, it's, well, it's a benefit for a customer coming on. They know they don't have to pay shipping on anything. Moving on then, we have the menu bar, which obviously contains the logo. We've got the search bars, um, the search option, sorry, and the different product categories. And this is where the site starts to lack professionalism, in my opinion. If it was me, I would, I like the logo, but I would get it redesigned so that the background color of it was neutral, so you could integrate it to your store so it doesn't stick out so much. In terms of the product categories themselves as well, I would tidy that up so either it fit evenly across two lines or perhaps they were separated into their own box just to make them look, just have a bit more purpose if that makes sense. So it looks like they haven't just randomly been put on the page, but there is actually like a proper location for them. Moving down then we have this white space. Also there's quite a lot of kind of blank space up here too. I'm a big fan of not having much blank space because if you go to any big well-known e-commerce site, so My Protein, Gymshark, I mean Amazon, just to name a few, then you won't get much blank space like this. Um, which is the case here as well. As you can see, he's got some sort of maybe app or add-on here that doesn't quite integrate very well into the store, so I would remove that. And then moving into this full width image here, the image itself is great. However, in my opinion, it lacks any specific purpose. Certainly from my point of view, I found that the easier and quicker you can make it for a customer to make a purchase and the better. The longer they're on your store, think about it, we live in a world full of distractions. Just on your phone alone, there's so many different apps you could get notifications from, you get phone calls, somebody in real world could talk to you. Um, so in my opinion, the longer somebody's on your store, the more chance there is of them getting distracted. So what I like to do is have everything on my store for a purpose that just makes it easier and faster for somebody to make a purchase. So rather than having like a generalized message here with a general image, if it was me, I would have a certain range of products or even a certain product that linked straight to that particular product page. And it could be some sort of discount as well to even further entice somebody to click it. Moving on, we go back to the blue background and we've got a load of different collection images here. The images themselves are really good. They look high quality, they're not pixelated at all. And by the looks of things, he's listed every single product collection. 
What I would do here is just pick the most popular four that you're trying to push across, just because, especially somebody on a mobile phone, it, for them to get to the bottom of the page, it would mean them scrolling down quite far. So if it was me, then I would remove all of them except for maybe like the top three or four collections that you want to push at any point, uh, any given time. With regards to the background too, um, I think if you just put a white background here, it would make the store look a bit better. So maybe something you could experiment with. Um, certainly if you were to keep this image with it, obviously having a white background, then it sticks out like a sore thumb. To be honest, at this stage, I don't think there's any need for any of this here. So I would just remove it and just have the product collections. Moving into the footer of the site then, which is great. He's got all the required information. He's got the email address opt-in. He's got a refund policy, privacy policy, terms of service. I'm just gonna check these out very quickly um, just to make sure he's got the correct ones, which he has by the looks of things, which is great. So no problems there whatsoever. Next up then, if we just choose a random, let's go for children's toys and accessories with it coming up to Xmas, then obviously this is gonna be quite a popular niche. Um, he's got, again, I'm not sure what this is, but I would remove it. I would also remove this banner image here. At this point, there's it's not really doing anything for the customer. It's not gonna entice them into making a purchase. I'm a really big believer of if something doesn't serve a purpose on your site, then just get rid of it because if anything, it's only gonna distract your customer. If you haven't noticed already, he's got the order pop-up here, which is actually something I integrate into my own stores, um, and it does make a big difference. I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend you test this. Run your ads for two weeks with it, then two weeks without, and just compare your conversion rate. For some reason, he's got a trust badge here too. Not quite sure what's going on there, but I would certainly remove that. And again, because he's got some really decent product images here but with the white background in my opinion it just it looks a bit amateurish so i would certainly just by simply changing the background of this store to a white background it would make it look 10 times better in my opinion so let's check out the product pages he's got a really cool product here i like this this is featured in one of my videos before certainly in on coming up to christmas i can see this being a massive hit and so working from top to bottom again he's got white background so a white overall background would make it look better he's got the american spelling of color which is absolutely fine if he's planning on selling worldwide the add to cart button i'm a big believer in making the add to cart button a different color to the website background just so it sticks out a bit more trust me again something you should definitely split test run two weeks with a add to cart button like this then two weeks of say a bright orange one and believe it or not it makes a big difference there's been psychological studies into things like this um, so even by changing the color of your add to cart button it can make a big difference he's got the trust badge here again um, if you're going to include trust badges, I would have them at the bottom of your store. If not, just a nice small one that integrates with your site. Um, nothing too big, bold or standout-ish. Moving on to the product description itself. By the looks of things, he's got loads of detail here, which is awesome. However, I think it's a bit too extensive. Uh, when a customer comes onto your store, they're not gonna hang around to read absolutely everything. And if they do, again, the longer they're on your store and therefore the more chance they have of getting distracted. So I have done a video specifically on product pages, but the typical layout I like to follow is kind of like a couple of lines of creating a scene of where somebody would use this product, an example, and then just some bullet some bulleted points of the key features and benefits of something. Moving on, so he's got some specifications, which is great, loads of loads of detail, which is good. Just how you present and lay it out could change things for you. And then he's got some more product images. Um, again, I would just remove this. Certainly if somebody's coming onto your store on a mobile device, um, it's a long way for them to scroll down if they want to check out the rest of the information. It's got estimated delivery um, at the bottom, which is good. However, I would bulk this out a bit and make it sound a bit better than it actually is. So you can say EPAC Express Track Service five to 10 days or a minor detail, but sometimes it's the minor details that make all the difference. And then at the bottom of the page, he's got the options for customers to come on and leave a review for the product, which is spot on. And with that being said then, without saying too much um, and without making this video too long, that is Bargain Buys RS. So again, thank you very much to Stephen for submitting your store review. Um, apologies if I was a bit hard on you, but at the end of the day, if I didn't tell you 
what was wrong with it, then you could end up spending hundreds, if not thousands of pounds on ads um, and not see any sales. So hopefully those tips will help you out. Moving on to the next store, then we have Lily Tech. So this wasn't the next one in the list. So what I'm doing is if I don't include your store in a video, then it's because there's not a lot I can say about it, but I will send you a private DM just explaining that I'm not skipping over you because I don't want to review your store. Initial impressions, this store looks absolutely wicked. Um, really high quality professional looking store. If we just go to the product collection of the gadgets, you can see the images are really high quality. The font is a custom font. It's not just a default one. Um, it's sort of like a different hardness to the actual price of the product too. It just looks really professional from the get go. Again, same thing at the bottom. The color scheme is really professional. He's got the social media links in a different color. And it's just those little touches that tr they just make a store pop and they make it look so much better, so much more professional. So he's done a really good job on this site. I'm just gonna check out a couple of these pages too. Make sure obviously these li are linked correctly and this Facebook link here. The amount of stores I look at and the links aren't correctly created. And for a customer to come on the site and see that those little finishing touches aren't quite there, um, in my opinion, it would put people off and it would make them not trust you. And if somebody doesn't trust you, then obviously they're not going to spend your money with you. Um, by the looks of things, he's gone to the extent of doing that. So no qualms there. Everything looks absolutely spot on. Um, so far, so good. He's got the .com domain. The only thing he hasn't got is a favicon image there. Now, it's not a necessity. Will it make a difference to your sales? Maybe not. However, but for the couple of minutes it takes to upload one, um, in my opinion, it's worth doing. Moving on to the product pages then, if we just take the first product and have a look at this one. Um, and just again, initial impressions are very good. You might hear me talk about the flow of a website a lot. And what I mean by that is that when you just scroll down, everything fits in, nothing really sticks out and looks awkward or out of place. And they've done this with this site. They've done a really nice job here. So the only thing I would recommend to this person is to experiment with the color of the add to cart button because they've gone for that minim minimalist design and theme. It looks really good. It looks really nice. However, simply by changing this add to cart button to a slightly bolder color, so it stands out a bit more then it could make a, it could make a slight difference. It might make no difference at all, but it's something that I recommend to absolutely everyone experiment with. If it was me, what I would do is switch the colors of these two buttons. So I would have a black add to cart button and then a white uh, more payment options button. Moving down into the product description. Again, he's got loads and loads of details. He's got in the box, which is really good. Um, the product description is quite extensive and he's written like, um, I suppose you could call it an essay, a small essay. But because he's put certain keywords and phrases in bold, then to me, it works really well. It fits in with the theme of the store. It's got a nice flow and a customer doesn't have to read the whole thing. They can just scroll through and they can see that you can take pictures. It's a quadcopter, it takes pictures and videos in HD. It's got an FPV function. Um, the viewing angle is 120 degrees, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got HD camera, the carry case is included, etc, etc. You don't have to read the whole thing to know the key features and benefits. So far, so good with this site then. There's nothing really that I can see is going to be causing this guy any problems when he starts to run ads. He may already be starting running ads. In fact, by the looks of things, he's got two different app um two different review options installed on his site. So I would definitely just stick with one and remove the other. That could look quite confusing to a customer um, and looks a bit out of place. If we just have a quick flick through the product images, everything looks absolutely spot on, really professional and nice. Let's actually add this product to the cart then and just have a quick look at his cart page. So as you can see, he's got free shipping there instead of the default tax note. So this guy's obviously spent a lot of time. He's done his research on how to build a Shopify store um, and he's done a really nice job at that. There's not really a lot more I can say about this other than good job. So that being said, then let's move on to the third and final store, which is Perfect Gems, which is a cat jewelry store. Starting from the top then, we have the Favicon, which is awesome, really good. He's got a .co.uk domain, so we'll get into that in a second to see um, how he spelt certain words and what currency he's advertising in. Um, but apart from that, he's got a really nice image here featuring some of the products, 
because the image has no background color, it integrates and looks really nice, really professional. Um, so far, so good. I catch your passion with a shop now button, assuming that takes them to certain products. So again, that works really well. Taking people, taking your customers directly to the products. Trust me, it can make a big difference. Moving down then we have the different product categories. I like the way this is laid out in fact. You've got two big ones there followed by three little ones but it's all in straight lines. It's got white backgrounds, it integrates nicely. It's the same kind of text, it's the same font as each other. Um, it looks quite professional and quite professional and expensive if that makes sense. Luxurious because of the certain fonts and colors etc. Moving on then, he's got to subscribe to our newsletter, which is standard, plus he's got some trust badges here. So if it was me being on the homepage, I don't think there's any need for these trust badges here, but it's not gonna make a big deal in my opinion. Um, I'm just talking as if it was me. One thing I would do though, is make these integrating um, or uniform with the rest of the store. So I would make them white and gray. I'm just gonna check out a couple of these links just to make sure these are linked up correctly. Uh, ref refunds and returns which is great that works correctly and so does that one so no problems there whatsoever so far so good so next thing let's check out a products page so just going to the collections page one thing I want to point out in fact is in my opinion I think he's listed these products too cheaply because the store looks quite professional and luxurious in my opinion then people expect to pay that price to kind of illustrate what I mean by this is that like when you go into a Rolex shop, like a goldsmith or somewhere that sells expensive watches, then the fixtures and fittings of the shop are really luxurious. There's really thick carpets. They give you really nice chairs to sit in. They offer you a drink. And the whole experience and feel of the store is expensive because they sell expensive products. Whereas if you were to go into a store like that, but then they sold watches for say 20 pounds and um, that were made out of poor quality materials then it doesn't marry up and it would raise suspicions with you and it's the same with the website because this website looks really nice but then the products are only 12 pounds then it it doesn't make sense if you know what i mean and and it works the other way around too if you try and sell really expensive products but your store looks um, quite amateurish and quite poor then people aren't gonna think it's legit because if you can afford to sell these expensive products, then why can't you afford to have a really decent website? So if it was me then, I would push my luck a bit here and perhaps increase the prices of these. Just because people coming onto your store, you've got a really nicely designed store that looks really professional, then they would expect to pay the price that matches that too. So Pets Footprint Earrings, what I would do here too is because you're building a brand here around cat jewelry, instead of actually calling your product exactly what it is because i'm pretty sure if i went onto google and searched for these then i could probably find the same product if not very similar within the space of 10 seconds as you just saw so what i would do is to avoid that happening so people can't go elsewhere so much is come up with your own unique range of products so for example you could call this product or this range of products you could put cat into say like a translator and find like a latin word for cat or certain latin words in cats and have that as your range of products and then that way when somebody goes to search that on google to find the same product cheaper they're not going to find anything apart from your store so moving on then as we can see he's used the american spelling of color so i would 100 percent change that if you're focusing on a uk audience again it doesn't marry up why if somebody from the uk coming on here sees that you're using an american spelling it's going to arouse suspicion it's going to arouse questions and from my own experience people don't hang around if they have questions they'll just go elsewhere uh, moving on to the add to cart button he's got this in a solid color that's different to the background so it sticks out really nicely so in my opinion he's done a good job here and then he's took the time to actually write something even though it's brief about the product because again with the type of store people want it's about the whole experience and the more you can build on that experience and do it in a uniform way that matches your products matches your prices etc then the better in my opinion He's got the mention of shipping here, free worldwide shipping, which is good, and then a link to their shipping policy for shipping time. So no problems there whatsoever. 
In terms of the product image itself, because he's only got one, it's absolutely fine there in my opinion. Um, if he wanted to, we could add it to the product images, but I don't think it's gonna make much difference. Next up then, he has, by the looks of things, looks reviews, which is the review app. The review app I recommend everybody install. In my opinion, it looks the most professional, it looks the best, and it's really easy, customizable as well. So you can change the color of the stars, you can change the font as well. And by the looks of things, he's probably imported these from AliExpress. Um, but it creates a lot of social proof for, for the product and it's gonna help with the amount of sales he makes as well. So good job there. Moving on to the final section of this video, then I'm just gonna quickly add this product to cart and see what his cart page looks like. He's got free shipping included there, no mention of taxes or calculations, etc. So he's done a really good job there, takes them straight through to checkout. They can select PayPal, so on and so forth. So a job well done there, another really decent looking store. And that pretty much just about wraps up the video then. If you're still watching, you're still stuck with me all this way through, thank you very much. Hopefully I've given you some good actionable information that will help you with your own stores. Um, don't forget to check out the link for the free eBooks in the video description below. There's five different eBooks covering all different as aspects of your dropshipping business. So check those out, let me know what you think to them. And with that being said then, I'm just gonna get into announcing the winner of the previous video for the one-to-one -one call. So here we are then guys on my previous video that I uploaded yesterday. Thank you very much for all the support and questions on that. It really does help with the growth of the channel. Um, by the way, it's worth mentioning, in fact, if you, in case you missed it in my previous one, I am currently moving house. So everything is all over the place at the moment. So I do apologize for the poor video quality. Hopefully the audio quality isn't too bad. Anyway, I'm just gonna take the link. We'll open up our random comment picker. Um, and let's see who's gonna win then the one-to-one -one consultation from the previous video. 24 unique comments, which is awesome in 24 hours. So thank you very much. Um, just a little blip there. The winner then of the previous video is Daniel Krish. So thank you very much for your comment. Uh, make sure you reach out on Instagram. We can get that call arranged. And guys, if you just want to get straight down to business, book a call right away, then you can do so. Make sure you check out the links in the video description below. With that being said then, guys, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.